Diabolical Tales. Starring Jack Ferguson in another exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. experiences and authentic records of the government man known only as Special Agent X-132, who for many years has investigated the otherwise unexplained. Here is our star, Jack Ferguson, as X-132. My name is not important, but you can call me Special Agent X-132, or just X-132. I work on an above top secret project called the Enigma Files. This is my story. In a moment, listen for Jack Ferguson as X-132, Government Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. It's happening this time. The Soviet bombers are on their way to your city. In just minutes, a 41 kiloton atomic bomb is going to completely annihilate your home, your place of work, your church, your family. Are you prepared? My name is Bob Stockton, and I'm the defense warden for Bonsable County, Massachusetts, and I've been advising all homeowners to purchase an atomic shelter from Amalgamated Technologies. You can choose one of three practical, low-cost, above-ground shelters fully approved by the Department of Defense to protect you and your family when the atomic wars begin. Financing is available in most markets. Atomic Shelters. It's another great product from Amalgamated Technologies. Amalgamated is America. And now, Diabolical Tales. This above-top-secret report from the Enigma Files is marked Blood and Beatniks. Man, wait, wait, there's more. Get this one. How to tell the difference between a communist and a beatnik. <laughs> As if you couldn't tell. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Charlie. What in the hell's a beatnik? A beatnik? Come on, you know. Nah, I don't know. You know. No, really, I don't know. What, a fruit? Don't give me that. What don't you not understand? No, I don't know what the hell a beatnik is. Would you please tell me? What's a beatnik, Charlie? Excuse me, Special Agent X-736. Did you just use his given name? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. We're just trying to solve a real mystery here, X-132. What's a beatnik? He doesn't know what it is. I think you don't know what it is. Actually, I don't know what it is. Ha! I got you, you son of a bitch! You two all through? Yes, yeah, sir. Listen, X-736. I don't know what they were like over in Section 1C, but if you call Special Agent X-595 by his given name again in my presence, I'll have your job. <clears throat> uh, understood, sir. Won't be a problem. Anyway, as I understand it, a beatnik is a type of bitter cheese from Donetsk Uplands region of Ukraine. Or it might be from Bulgaria. One of those two. All right, let's get to work. The date was July 27, 1952. My boss, General Burton, had just put together a crack team of five field agents from various other top secret projects. Special Agents X-595 and X-736 were among them. They were assembled near my office. I'm gonna be the team leader, and we've got a mission. Yesterday, while working these UFO sightings in front of the Capitol building, I had an encounter with a man dressed all in black with a cloak. All the signs pointed to this strange man being an agent from an ancient underground civilization known as Agartha. And now
now this man from within the earth was out on the streets of Washington, D.C. with an advanced weapon of some kind. I need to get the men up to speed. All right, men. You've read my report, so you're up to speed. You know who we're looking for, and we're going to wander around aimlessly until we find him. If he points something at you, get out of the way, and fast. It's a sort of ray gun weapon that will reduce you to dust. A ray gun weapon? That's what I'm calling it for now, X-595. Actually, it looks more like lightning. Oh, and I don't know if it helps, but his name starts with a Z. Is this a target from out of space, X-132? Yeah, I mean, there's all these flying saucers out there right now. Maybe try the other way around. All right, let's go. After a few hours, our wanderings took us to the industrial district. We stopped near the Amalgamated Technologies building to pick up some coffee and take a breather. So, X-132, how do you know this man in black has a name that starts with a Z? What's that? His name. How do you know it starts with a Z? I don't know. The Nazi files said they had Z names. How'd the Nazis know? What's your security clearance again? SC-4? I'm SC-4, too. Well, if that's the case, I don't know what Nazi files you're referring to, gentlemen. <laughs> Something felt off. It had suddenly gotten very quiet and I felt eyes on us. Started looking around. The men followed my lead. that X-736 was pointing. Sure enough, there was our man, wearing a black cape and trying to look into the windows of the Amalgamated Technologies building. It was him! I drew my standard issue M1911 sidearm and aimed, and I could sense my fellow agents falling in behind me. There he is! Freeze, man in black! The man in black turned and then dropped to his knees, watching us as if we couldn't see him. What's he doing? Is this the lightning? I don't know. You, Z, stand up! And again, this guy didn't move. He just sat there, crouched over with his cape draped around him, as if that made him invisible. He seemed to be doing something with his hands, too. Let's get him! And that's when the man in black suddenly jumped to his feet. He pointed something at us and then... My men got hit. The others dropped to the ground. Oh my god! Holy crap. What the f we finally got some shots off in return. It was chaos. We were exchanging fire in the streets, with two men down already. The remaining three men and I returned fire from the crew. I looked up and saw the man in black turn and run down the street. I signaled the men, we climbed to our feet and ran off in pursuit. Lost another man a block up. We kept on the man in black, but I was growing concerned because he was headed toward the lawn of the Washington Monument. Even at this time of night, there was bound to be innocent civilians there. Stop following me, surface dwellers. Did he say surface dwellers? He said to stop following him, Charlie. At 736, don't use his given name. <laughs> the man in black murdered X-736. Now it's just down to me and X-595. This sinister caped man was good. And just as I feared, he was making straight for the Washington Monument. As we chased the man in black across the lawn of the Washington Monument, would you guess, more of the flying saucers appeared overhead. And already there were small crowds of citizens gathering around. X-132! The saucers! No time for them now! Get the target! X-595 nodded and was spread out. And then some John Q. public bystander saw us with our weapons and came running up to see me. Are you a G-Man? There's a flying saucer! They're everywhere! There's no flying saucer there, sir. That's a weather balloon. What? Then why do you have your guns drawn? There's a man dressed all in black. And now that's a crime? The man in black hit the innocent.
innocent bystander. She should have just gone home. X-595 and I started running right at the Washington Monument, where the man in black turned to face us. He raised his weapon at the fleeing crowds. Freeze, man in black! We sat there, staring down one another. Then he turned his weapon towards me and... I dodged away from the blast at the last second! But it hit Special Agent 595! I turned and looked to see the man in black was gone. I climbed to my feet, gradually walking around the base of the Washington Monument. And the man in black came up behind me. Just as I started to turn, he placed his weapon against my neck. I froze. Service dweller. We'll be back with Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. Working long hours and don't have time to sleep? Got a cram for the big test? Trouble concentrating while executing a precision bombing run on a target over 3,000 miles from home? Then it's time for Sunshine Benzedrine. Our inhalants can keep you active and awake, suppress your appetite, and force you to focus on the task at hand without any of the usual side effects. And now, Sunshine Benzedrine is available in tablets. There might even be a little something for the creatives out there. Sunshine Benzedrine. Put some pep in your step. And now, we're back with Jack Ferguson as G-Man Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales, The Enigma Files. And there I was, in a void of utter darkness. And then I heard some voices. Hey, mister, are you alright? But John, he's dead. No, he's not, Mary. See? He's breathing. The man from within the earth didn't kill me. His weapon just stunned me, knocked me out cold. And then I came to on the lawn of the Washington Monument. There was a boy and a girl, maybe 12, 13 years old, standing above me. How long was I out? Are you a G-Man? Did the flying saucers get you? <sighs> yep, I'm a G-Man. And no, the flying saucers didn't get me. Do you know why? No. no. Because the flying saucers don't exist. But I saw them. Just the planets Mars and or Venus and a figment of your young, overactive imagination. Don't worry about it. But he's right. I saw them too. Uh, th thanks, kids. Better run home now. Don't want to get into trouble. My would-be rescuers moved on. I looked around. The flying saucers were gone. A G-Man team was already interviewing other witnesses and I saw no trace of the mysterious man in black. I didn't know then that was the last I'd see him for another four months. I was tired, so I headed home. But little did I know then that what awaited me there would be more painful than losing five men in the field. And let me tell you, domestic bliss isn't all as cracked up to me when you're working for the United States government on above top secret projects. It's hard on a marriage. That's why most field agents working on projects like I am are not encouraged to marry. But I wasn't one of them. Long before I had a security clearance, I knew I wanted to have a wholesome American home life. And that dream cost me plenty. I hadn't seen my wife Diane in over a week. And when we spoke on the phone the night before, she said that she had something she wanted to talk to me about. In person. Diane, I'm home. It's about time. We need to talk. What's the problem? The problem is that I'm pregnant and I'm going to leave you. Wait, what? I, I couldn't believe my ears. I can't believe my ears, Diane. I said I'm pregnant and I'm going to leave you. Well, this isn't how it usually goes. I love you, but I can't keep living like this anymore. The secrets, the times you never hear. You're emotionally withdrawn, Mike. You don't say my given name! And that, that is the problem, I mean... Is our baby gonna call you Special Agent X-132 or Daddy? You're gonna have the baby without me? No, I'm running away with Dave. 
Who's Dave? This tall, lanky guy wearing sunglasses, a black turtleneck, and a beret walked into our house like he owned the place. He had a pair of bongos slung over his shoulder. Hey man, I'm Dave. Dave's our neighbor. You've met before. How's it going, Daddy-o? Diane, I I don't understand. (sighs) I'm running away with Dave. Let's tell the baby his real father was killed in the war. What? Why would you do that? Because I want my child to live in a world without guns. Without secrets and away from all this capitalist propaganda. I hate Washington. Jesus, you sound like a red. And now your name is X-132. You're gonna let me do this. You're gonna grant me a divorce. And Dave and I will raise our child on poetry, jazz, and bezadrine. It's gonna be a gas, man. Knock it off with the bongos, Dave. But Diane, I- I've always loved you. And I've always loved you. But with a baby, I can't keep living like this. I won't ask for alimony. I can live off my writing. But I'm sorry. You've got to let me go. I... I... I understand. Actually, there was much more to it than just that. But the long and short of it was this. I gave her up. My wife, my child, my American dream. Maybe she was right about all this with my life of secrets. It's not, it's not good for a family life. And even though I knew nothing about this guy Dave and his bongos except that he smelled of bitter cheese, yeah, maybe it would be better for the kid. I don't know. Anyway, that's how I lost my wife. I went back to the Pentagon. I was glad to have an assignment, otherwise I'd have been hitting the local tavern and drowning my sorrows in scotch. After that second encounter with the man from within the earth, General Burton called me into his office. Come. General Burton, you wanted to see me? I just got back from the biggest press conference our government has held since the end of World War II. So the flying saucer issue is resolved, for now. Meanwhile, I hear you've had another incident. Lost some more of my men. Lots of witnesses. Now we've got to explain this one away, too. I've got a cover story plan, General. Don't worry about it. Project Mockingbird will handle the fallout. All right, X-132. You've got me convinced. After all these years, you've made good with this men from within the Earth business. So X-13 was right all along. About Agartha. X-13 is dead. And in our business, that means you should have forgotten about him a long time ago, X-132. But, uh, yes, it appears that X-13 was right about this Agartha threat. I was waiting for a promotion or a commendation or something when... We're closing down the Enigma files. What? After we've learned so much? After my men were killed out there by that man in black? The committee is restructuring the projects. It's an election year, remember? I sat back in my chair. I couldn't believe it. It was preposterous. I don't believe this. It's preposterous. Settle down, X-132. I've heard talk that this president is going to start another new intelligence outfit, an agency so secret that it will have no official charter to speak of for at least the next two dozen years. The front is that it's mostly going to be involved with signals interception, but this agency will have other more clandestine operations to run, and it'll be more suited to handle the otherworldly elements that you're dealing with. UFOs, ghosts, or the underworld? One of the first investigations we're going to start is Project Agartha, and we'd like you to head it up. Will I be working with anyone else? No, this is above top secret. We'll get you an SC-7 clearance for it, but strict this time. Understand, X-132? No mentioning it to your wife so she can use it as a subplot in some smutty sex book. Out of professional courtesy, I'm going to pretend I didn't even hear that, General. Just so we understand each other. You're sure you're up to it? Pretty sure. Then welcome to the National Security Agency, Operative 132. 
Thank you, General Burton. Technically speaking, I'm not your boss anymore, but Monday morning I want to know everything you know so we can incorporate it into our threat matrix. Affirmative 0132? I'm on it, General Burton. It's a measure of national defense. And that was how I became known as Operative 132 and got the job with the NSA and how Project Agartha came about. You still with me, Agent Cooper? <sighs> yep. Uh, Tibetan 45, Operation Nazi in 39. But what's the amalgamated technologies connection, 0132? Oh, I guess it's nothing. It's not important. Just spinning my wheels. Hey, I bet you could go for a fresh cup of joe. You said it, 0132. Let's go. <laughs> This is Jack Ferguson. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, some of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Operative 132, G-Man. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. Radio Hour starred Jack Ferguson, Brianna McDowell, Kyle Stroud, Troy Sterling Neese, Steve DeMonico, Bill Stearns Jr., Jared Alcorn, Molly Dill, Laura Stearns, Christian Wheeler, E.B. Stearns, Brandon Kane, and Ryan Bedell as FBI Agent Cooper. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Garrett, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. <laughs>